the EX side of things and is playing two of my favorite cards, the Monkey Dory from this set. Yeah, Monkey Dory is there and we are off. We saw the fist bump and it does look like Henry Brand is going to be starting off with the ideal turn one card, that Buddy Buddy Poffin. Go grab yourself two Pokemon with 70 HP or less. And of course, we see that unfair stamp just nestling at the front. Another one like Monkey Dory, one of the new tricks we see in Gardevoir. One of the things that is making this deck better. This is much better than it was in Bologna last weekend, Joe. It's taken a big jump in power, and Monkey Dory and Unfair Stamp, the two big new cards from the set for it. Yeah, the Adrenoblane is just such a flexible ability. It can allow you to target down low hit point Pokemon over a number of turns, or it can allow you to ramp up that damage output that little bit more. And I think that's what Henry's going to try and cash in on here. Henry does have the early history oh, in nice. Heavy Ball, and we know the Squawk Ability X is available if he would uh, so wish, but you have to bear in mind when you are seeing a Confei already, and you're up against Lost Zone Box. If you are using this Squawker Billy, which is going to be the take here, you have to be aware that Iron Hands could at some point take a three prize KO on this card. Yeah, when you see Lost Zone, you nowadays you're pretty sure they're going to be playing the Iron Hands. 120 damage with the Ampu very much. It's not enough to take out most two prize Pokemon, <laughs> but if you're weak to Lightning, that gets you a lot of the way there. There's wow, one bench space left. <laughs> it is going to be used. Oh, an early Squawker Tease. No mucking about here. Yeah and going to get rid of uh, one of those Professor Churro scenario and Iono and Rare Candy. Good cards, but cards that aren't really helping you draw more. And we are going to pass things over. Let's start having a look at Andrew's hand and also have a chat about his deck list. It's a very aggressive get to seven in the Lost Zone deck list. He's playing four copies of Pokestop and three copies of Lost Vacuum. So it's not out of the realms of possibility that we start unlocking those Mirage Gates as early as this turn. Yeah, you need seven cards in the Lost Zone. Generally speaking, we could see three Comfey plus your plus your Corvus's experiment, yeah. plus you would have to use a, a lost vacuum to get rid of your own tool or stadium. Yeah. That would get you to seven turn one. It is absolutely possible. And then we've got things like your Iron Hands, Iron Thorns, Radiant Greninja. All of those then become active. Blood Moon Earth Luna, probably a, a little early for that one yet. Yeah. But we have got some good ones. And obviously, if we could see an Iron Hands EX this turn, it's a lot to ask. Yeah. But if we could see it this turn, that Screamtail does not have 128 PJ. <laughs> it could be a great way to kickstart the turn. I think Andrew's hand is very good. I already see some switching cards. I already see the Colorus. So we are going to be drawing a lot here. And much different from our round two game where it was Lost Zone up against Gardevoir, and a Fluttermane just happened to be the start for the Gardevoir <laughs> player, completely shutting down our Comfe here, but no issues for Andrew this time around, who is doing a quick deck search. Still going to be really important for this archetype where you play a number of one of Pokemon. He's already uh, scouted the fact that there is no Iron Hands available just yet, uh, but also some low counts of energy cards, even low counts of supporters like Boss's Orders and Roxanne. So it is integral to do a thorough deck search. Seems like Andrew is pretty much happy with the state of things and will be shopping things up and start ramping up that Lost Zone. That is always the objective of these Lost Zone archetypes because the Cramorant can attack for three after four cards hit the Lost Zone, which is going to be quite easy from Andrew's hand. So pressure can be initiated. As Here see comes a poker the Poker stop. stop. Energy goes away, but switch card and switch go to mm. hand. I mean, when you've got two Comfey on the bench and you get two switching cards <laughs> off of a Poker Stop, that's quite nice. And a Colrus's experiment straight away. Couple of, I mean, you kind of want the lightning energy, you've got to think, if you're going to be going Iron Hand, but it is prized. Yeah. Switch has to be dropped, but you got two off the poker stops, so it's not the end of the world. You've got plenty of those. Looks like just going to throw away. Is it Super, Super Rod, Rod here? Yeah, that's what he's popped down. Versus possible lightning. Oh, yeah. no, it looks like that's what he's taking, actually. Certainly worth a debate. You can see the issue here. You're trying to juggle the best possible turn, oh. which would be in Iron Hands, versus like the most likely outcome. Yeah, that you won't hit Hisui in off your next couple Confe. And there are free Lightning Energy in the deck, so there's still two available. It's not the end of the world. You want to keep it, and you saw there was that real decision to be made there, but you got things like Poke Gear to get your Chorus's Experiment next turn. Super Rod, you're going to want it in a couple of turns' time, so... Stop, yeah, me you, you stop me if you've heard this one, Ross. We have a headache of a flower selecting. It's <laughs> Palpad versus Cramorant. Ooh. We are going to have to sacrifice the Palpad early here. There's there only is, one Cram. There is only one Cramorant, so it is the take here. So Andrew can at least initiate some pressure. One big nuance of the matchup is that we see an Iron Thorns EX hit the Lost Zone. The only one. Yeah, the one of. Not really for this matchup, I think, so right. much as others. Um, certainly Lugia, it can be a huge deal. We are going to see a Cramorant come down. One issue here with the Lost Zone variants and why it's possibly a riskier play this weekend is that the Unfair Stamp is such a huge defensive card that the Gardevoir players are mostly running and Henry the same here. 
So if you do go aggressive with Cramorant, you have to be aware that you could end up on a really low hand size after this quite early on in the game. Yeah, you can get really punished. Unfair Stamp is made to punish these aggressive decks, and this mm. is an aggressive deck. We do see an Iron Bundle hitting the bench there, which is interesting. It would mean you could either get a free hit on the Scorgabilly or KO something else on the bench if you prefer, but I kind of like taking out the Screamtail. Screamtail can get super annoying. The Iron Bundle is just such a clutch card in this matchup on, on most turns, essentially. Yes. Especially when Henry's going to look to utilize the bulk of the Guard of White EX now that Roaring Moon is far less popular. Just keeping that Iron Bundle on the bench does seem quite valuable to me, as we are eventually switching into this Cramorant, and thanks to the Lost Provisions ability, we'll be able to use that Spit Innocently attack for no cost here. Andrew having a big debate over this Iron Bundle, whether or not to push the screen tail out of the active position. It's just going to be the KO. I think because you've already switched into Cramorant, it would give Henry the option to go into Squawkabilly. Yeah. A, a sort of call my bluff situation. And with more Churro in the deck list, it would have been possibly wasted damage. And you don't want a two-hit KO to Squawkabilly. What you no. really want to do is get it with the Iron Hands later on in the game. So Henry here does have a Nest Ball, eyeing up that Flutter Mane which is going to be coming down, of course, always fun to say, oh, you know, there's Comfort you're relying on. Yeah. Got it. And if you can combine it with an unfair stamp mm. to turn off their draw power while putting them down to a two-card hand, that is always fun if you can make it work. Looks like we've got a power pad for a Turo and an Iono going back in here. Yeah, I at the very least saw another Iono in hand for Henry, so that's going to be a big deal. I believe that's also Counter Catcher, so you can make some cheeky plays with Counter Catcher and Fluttermane. Maybe you can response KO on a Confe, locking out Flower Selecting from Andrew. But it's going to hold off on the Counter Catcher. Maybe just looking to set up damage across the board. You can, in some aspects, board lock the Lost Zone archetype and use Monkey Dory to clear up damage later. Let's yeah. see, I didn't see any Curlier, I don't think, from this hand. Was there any Ball Search? I see Vessel, lots of Buddy Buddy Poffin. No, Buddy Buddy Poffin are not going to cut it. We do see the manual retreat here into that Flutter main. Midnight Fluttering does turn off abilities of your opponent's active Pokemon, unless, of course, it is Midnight Fluttering. <laughs> so it does actually mean the Cramorant's not even able Ooh. to attack into the Flutter main. Now we see Poker great stop. view there on the Pokestop, and there are Still a couple no of Curlia. options. Henry didn't choose to use the Vessels to thin the deck of Psych Energy. Ended up losing another Iono, though, so that's two down and a power pad already spent. It's just a pass. Henry just trying to slow down with this Midnight Fluttering. Really whiffed from his own Iono there. That was not a good turn from Henry. Getting zero Curlia out when you're able to do so is not a good idea. You know, not being able to get any attacks off on the board as well. Not hitting your unfair stamp to really sow your opponent. And we Ooh, do see a Hisuian. heavy ball off the poker stop. That could lead to Iron Hands. And getting three more cards on the Lost Zone this turn is not going to be that difficult. There's already a Coruscant experiment in hand. That hits the board. If we can see a Comfe or a Lost Vacuum, that's going to turn Mirage as well game. in the hand for Andrew. As you said, with switching cards, you can spend this Iron Bundle and still get to seven using Flower Selecting as well. So a lot of options here. I believe there's already one Mirage Gate in the hand. Yes, there is. So I think we're getting pretty close. I don't see it just yet. You can also do a very cool play, which is vacuum your own Pokestop and go for another Pokestop in hand, dig even deeper into the deck. I love doing that, getting double use of the stadium, which you're not usually allowed to do. Ooh, now, here we go, tough choice for Henry. This I like so much more, because now you yeah. know the Iron Hand is on board, so you can't just go hit my Scorkabilly, see if I care, because actually, you really do care. Yeah, you would be on your knees it's begging be for no Iron Hands here. Yeah, Manaphy seems like the best option. You know you can recycle this fairly easily with Super Rod. And now it's down to Andrew, who will reveal the Iron Hands here, thanks to the Hisuian Heavy Ball. Also just going to make sure that they're on track of their other prize cards. Oh, it's going to be the Confe. Oh, maybe took the Iron Hands from, pri from their first prize, perhaps, from the Cramorants, if it's already in hand. Oh, might already have done, actually. We'll just, yeah, we'll have to figure that one out either in a way. Second. Either way, we... the line's open. Oh, it's absolutely open. That sounds good to me. Now here's a lost vacuum. You don't need a fourth comfy. There is confirmation, of course, that there is no Iron Hands in the prizes. So yeah. Iron Hands, absolutely a possibility Ooh, here. Hits prime a prime catcher. catcher off of Pokestop. Does lose Radiant Grin Ninja, but that can be recovered. So actually, there is a chance here to not just hit the Iron Hands, but hit the Iron Hands onto the Squawk ability if that's what you wanted with the prime catcher. We do have one more selecting here, which gets us a step closer. And there is a nestable pickup. Does that change our situation here? 
for Andrew. I think we still can't use Ampy very much this turn. No, you'd need two Mirage Gate, and I don't see a second one around right now. Going to even prizes again, though, isn't too bad. Ooh, the Rescue Board versus the uh, other Nest Ball here. Do you want to preemptively gate some various Pokemon this turn? Maybe even gate into a Sableye this turn and setting it up for the following turn? I don't mind that at all. You are constantly in fear of the unfair stamp in this matchup, so preloading any Pokemon onto this board is still helpful. Yeah, it does go for the Nest Ball there, as you suggested. You want to try and make yourself as, as unfair stamp proof as possible. You're yeah. never going to be perfect, but just trying to go, look, if you unfair stamp me, I've got some options next turn. Mm -hmm. If I don't draw out of it, if the worst case scenario does happen, I've at least got some attacks. What you don't want to do is run into a flutter main with no attacks on the board. That is when things get very, very bad. Andrew is slowly debating this nest ball, but eventually does play one. And this is where we'll see what he's really thinking about. Is it going to be an early Iron Hands and set up some damage or just retain this single prize board? I think I like the Sableye the most here, personally. And you are already at 10 in the loss zone, so if you wanted to loss mine this turn, yeah, it's you open. absolutely could. Yeah, I think that's probably the best play, to be honest with you. Start setting up some damage. There is a 60 hit point Rolts in play, as well as two 70 hit pointers. Maybe I'm just taking out Rolts and putting Squawkability EX in range of a later Sableye or a Cramorant plus Gusting effect. Could be big as well. Lots of things you can set up with this Lost Mine. Such a flexible option. And you force the turn attachment onto the Mana Feed to retreat, because of course, if you get a Guard of War EX, can't attach to a water Pokemon using the ability. That's also true. So it does make things a bit more awkward. There's an energy on the Comp Fade just to use for retreat in the future if you want it. Yeah. And it do just see a pass. pass. Really interesting from Andrew. Had a lot more aggressive options available with Prime Catcher and a few other moments, but Andrew's taking a Foot off the gas here as we see a three card miss from Henry there from the poker stop. Of course, if you don't take a KO, that does mean that Unfair Stamp is not live. That's true. So it might be keep your hand. I can Iron Hands next turn. I've got Prime Catcher in hand. I don't want to leave myself vulnerable. You've already seen your opponent get rid of two Iron O, including one off the poker stop. Mm. So you might be thinking, you know what? My hand's pretty safe right now. Yeah, I think, I think it's really a testament to Andrew recognizing the fear factor of Unfair Stamp <laughs> and how dangerous that can be. If your board isn't fully prepped, let's just hold off and then try and have a turn where I establish multiple threats. So even if I have no hand, I'll have more plays to sort of chain my way through this matchup. It's one card. It's an ace spec. You get one of them in your deck, and it can completely change so many matchups and how, how you approach them and how your opponent has to approach their matchup with you. It does make such a big difference. We do see a Super Rod coming down here. That Screamtail getting recovered. There's at least one Curlier going back in as well. Yeah. I think this is all pre-Professor's research for Henry. I believe that's in hand. Just one copy in the deck list. So we'll be finally able to pitch some of these Psychic Energy. Uh, bank those in the discard pile. You are losing out on your second rare candy, so we're really looking for Curliers here from these seven cards. We finally start seeing some, and Henry might have the opportunity to use TM Evolution here as well, perhaps. Need to start getting Curlier down onto the board. There is the first one coming down, so at least you can start getting some cards. There is a Radiant Greninja in hand, but I don't believe there is bent space for it at the moment. We have plenty of ball search, so at least Henry can start cycling through the deck. That is an objective of the Guard of War player. We love to throw Psych Energy in the discard pile for some of our Pokemon, but also just using this refinement to basically filter out all the poor cards. And Henry has the option of possibly retreating into Fluttermane or using this TM Evolution. If we're spending Ultra Ball, we're probably retreating. But if we're going TM Evo, it means we're just going to end on this Manaphy in the active still. I don't mind this. You're going to start your next turn with free Curlia on the bench, and then you're actually going to start being able to do what Gardevoir does. One of the things that makes Gardevoir such a great deck is you are just drawing so many more cards yeah. than your opponent. If you don't have your Curlia, you're not drawing the cards, and frankly, you don't play this deck if you're not drawing from Curlia continually. So it's not been a good start for Henry. This has taken far longer than planned, but at least next turn, the deck should really start doing what the deck is supposed to start doing. So how annoying can Andrew be on this <laughs> turn? Can he take a big KO with Iron Hands? Because if you can go up by like three prizes, that's going to make a big difference before Henry even really gets going. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh. Already Mirage Gate. Well, you are losing out on boss's orders. And that's the second of the free Lightning Energy currently unavailable, mm. although it can be Super Rodded back in. Yeah, I think we want to dig towards Super Rod. I think those are some of the big cards here. Even if you just take out the Mana Fee and set up Greninja and Iron Hands <laughs> with a number of Mirage Gate, that could be very powerful. Don't mind that at yeah, all. Here are the Super Rods. I think that's what we have mostly been lacking here for Andrew. We know that Greninja is in the discard pile right now. A number of those energy, as you mentioned, Ross. 
So, yeah, two rods and a Mirage Gate being kept. Those seem like good cards to keep track of here. <laughs> I would definitely be perfectly happy with that. And let's face it, Buddy Buddy Poffin at this point in the game, it's done its job. It's an early game card most of the time. We drop a poker stop, that's fine, there's one in play, and again, you've done a lot of what you need to do with that card already. Now is the time for setting up your attacking threats and just basically saying to Henry, you know what, I'm going to be far enough attacks in the next few turns, don't try and hand disrupt me, try and match me, mm. but by the way, I've got attackers set up and I'm two prizes ahead. So the debate really is, do you go crazy with Iron Hands and take a three prize knockout with Prime Catcher on Squawker Billy, and then you spend your final gusting card? Or are we going to try and weave in some more Sableye math, get a little bit sneaky? One of the benefits of Andrew with the board right now is there's no space really for Monkey Dory. Oh, you know what I want to do, catcher. Joe. Yeah. You know what I would pick every time. We mentioned this on turn one that this was a possibility, didn't we? And I told, like, I always go for the most aggressive play because <laughs> that's the most fun for me. Andrew <laughs> apparently agrees. I'm down with this. And look, you're going up three prizes before Henry's really got going. Next turn, Henry starts getting going. You've got all the refinement with Curlia. You're going to start throwing some attacks out it's going to be fun but that's when you're already three prizes down that is a bad time to start going here so we know this is going to be easy we've got the double mirage gate already in hand yeah we've got super rod to recover those cars we need to recover everything is in hand and ready to go yeah i love recovering obviously these energy but possibly even the iron bundle might be worth recovering as well here andrew is holding on to two copies of super rod right now doesn't feel like you get maximum value because you'd only be rotting back bundle and one psyche energy but maybe for preloading that Sableye, it still might end up being worthwhile for you here. To just spend all these super rods proactively. Maybe even, well, yeah, we're going to double gate this turn, no doubt. Oh, absolutely, you have to. We can't do two lightning energy, that's not nope. possible. They have to be different types of energy cards. And yes, going straight they onto do. the Iron Hands. Look how thin Andrew's deck is right now. I think it was five cards. It's really not the very many. Gate. And it means you're going to draw into what you need. If there's only a couple cards left in there, you're going to get what you want. Here comes. The second Mirage Gate. Yeah, he, he does have water in hand, so you can just put one on here. Yeah. And then manually attach to get all the way to Ampy very much. Don't mind this. And of course, INO is really not going to do too much at this point. Unfair stamp isn't because you're going to be drawing two out of a very low deck. We do see the Ampy very much into the Squawker Billy. Andrew takes three prizes there. And I talk about Andrew going up three prizes. Well, of course, man, Andrew's gone up four prizes. Yeah. Three this turn, four in total. And now Henry is really on the back foot. If Iron Hands attacks again, it's game over. Absolutely the case. Let's see how Henry, uh, Henry can work his way around this situation. We have a lot of cards already in the hand. We have Monkey Dory Darkness Energy. We've just drawn into Guard of Y EX. We have potential for counter catch plays if we want to for trapping, but I feel like you have to attack with a Guard of Y EX into this Iron Hands this turn. Absolutely. And you have to hand disrupt. Yeah. Is there any gusting left for Andrew at this point? Obviously, he's used his... It would just be Super Rod for Iron Bundles at this stage. There's no bundle currently in the deck list, but you can rod them back during the remainder of this game. And if there's only one guard of while, then Iron Bundle would force something active, which yep. has got enough, well, low enough hit points yep. that Iron Hands would take the win. Here comes an Arvin for Henry, goes and gets a tool and an item. And oh, look, unfair stamp straight. Doesn't even need a tool, just using Arvin for unfair stamp. This is my point about unfair stamp. Not only is it great, if you want it, you can have it. You Arvin for it, and if you want Arvin, use Luminion to get Arvin to get unfair stamp. It is not a random one of item you are hoping you draw into. Right. The vast majority of decks can pick it out at the exact moment they want it. We see it in Pidgeot decks, we see it in decks with uh, Forest Seal Stone and Arvin as well. Yep. If you want this card, you can have it whenever you want, normally. Yep. You get five. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, a little bit of technical difficulties there, but you think that's going to stop me and Joe talking about Pokemon? No, no, no. We had a long flight out here. We are going nowhere, except we are going right back to the game because the players are still playing and we need to catch up with exactly what's happening. Although, you did nail it, Joe. It is exactly like you suggested was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, Henry finished off his turn. He evolved into a Guard of White EX into the active position, used Monkey Dory to prep the damage on this Iron Hands that's now currently retreating, and he attacked with his Guard of White EX. Uh, to heavily damage this Iron Hands. Andrew looks like he's done a huge retreat of that Iron Hands and is reloading for Sableye here. I see Super Rod and Mirage Gate in this hand for Andrew, who is still just looking to close out those last couple prizes. Shouldn't be too difficult if you're using Sableye for this one. 
and it looks like we're eyeing up that iron bundle to possibly close out the game with a Cramorant play as we are going to see Mirage Gate onto the Sableye. Yeah, and it's a very similar thing we were talking backstage during the last game. If you can get a second guard of wire up, that turns off the iron bundle. And it looks like one of the only things that might still be an issue here is that Andrew might be low on switching cards. This Iron Hands could eventually be stuck, perhaps. I think there's one switch card remaining in the deck for Andrew. So possibly if Henry can spy this, looking at some resources, we're already seeing that exactly from Henry right now. Seeing a four retreat cost Iron Hands have to pay all of those energy to move out the way could give you the option to start weaving in Monkey Dory as well as Screamtail to take some bench prize cards at some point. Yeah, God of War is a good deck to trap stuff in the active. Screamtail can hit the bench, and of course what you can do is hit the active and then very slowly <laughs> Monkey Dory and just never KO the active. Yeah. That's the thing. Some decks, you can trap them in the active until there's a KO. God of War, you can trap them in the active, never KO them. In the same way the Lost Zone can, of course, with Sableye. I'd love to see the knockout on Fluttermane here from Andrew, so you keep your bundle Cramorant as an option to close the game next turn. It is very tempting to take away some draw power and also get rid of the Monkey Dory as well. So, so many good options on Henry's bench. It is going to be 110 to the Monkey Dory as well as one onto the Fluttermain. And Andrew goes down to one prize card in game one here. Yeah, that last prize, it kind of has to be taken with a Cramorant now, looking at what we've got and what's mm. already been used. Does seem like that Cramorant is going to be the thing which is probably going to be taking the last prize. Gardevoir is going to be easily able to KO that Sableye, and you have to KO the Sableye. If you don't KO the Sableye, then you just lose straight away anyway. So you go after the Sableye and just try and do everything you can. And one option here is Ooh. evolving. Oh, what we see, Joe, what There's we see. I Iono. That seems pretty important. You can put Andrew down to just one card in hand. I'm not sure if Henry still has any counter catch remaining. If you're going to get really cheeky, you can use Monkey Dory maybe to finish off Iron Hands this turn and just take some prize cards as well. That could if be. you've filled your bench with Monkey Dory, you can't start using Screamtail too much. So, like you said, Ross, probably will just be looking to take out Sableye this turn. Yeah, I think that's what you've got to do. You don't want to open up a possibility for Sableye to just take that final prize on something like a Manaphy pretty easily next turn. One thing I would love to see here is a potential, going kind to of get a second Gardevoir out so that, because as it stands at the moment, anything on the bench, I believe, unless I missed something obvious, is in range of Cramorant. Well, the Fluttermane can deny the oh, lost provisions. That would, be, that would be big. So the Fluttermane could be good. Yeah, that's why I, I kind of liked the KO on the Fluttermane. We're going to see a retreat here from Henry. I did say the Fluttermane. To actually go into the, the Fluttermane. Fluttermane. Yeah. So this is a way to shut down Flower Selecting as well as Cramorant as an attacking threat. This is really important. You put your opponent down to one card in hand just saying that hopefully I can buy turns and remove attackers. Andrew's deck doesn't have many cards remaining, has gone through a number of the Mirage Gate and switching cards at this stage. Henry also going low in cards remaining in deck as we see a three card discard there from the poker stop. But there is the is KO on the KO. Sableye, 20 yeah. damage on the Iron Hands, KO that as well. Big free prize turn from Henry there. Still oh, the it's the KO remaining. with Gongfei, Psychic Energy. <laughs> Look at this, what a way to win the game. Psychic Energy attacking with Confei. You do not see that every day, Ross. Yeah, that was, I'm going to be honest with you. There were a lot of options available. Okay, Confei, and the Confei isn't an attacking threat. Confei in most 99% of the games you play, Confei might as well not have an attack. But spinning attack, free, two energy, 30 damage. You don't expect to ever use it, but because Gardevoir had to put the damage onto the Fluttermane in order to power it up to do the attack, that actually opened the door for Comfey. A lot of these Lost Zone decks go very low on Psychic Energy, but there's two here, and that was enough as we get to the replay. Yeah, as we saw, some very good early pressure displayed from Andrew, then took a turn off, decided to just hold on to a really strong hand, made sure Henry couldn't use that devastating unfair stamp and was just able to hold this huge combination of Gate plus Prime Catcher onto Squawker Billy. As Henry really struggled to get into the game, had a big whiff from Iono, a few of those poker stops also just not really helping out too much, any ball search being missed as we see that big KO from the Iron Hands. It just kind of took too long for Henry to get into this game with Curlier being quite a slow uh, process in that game one.